angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. I'm so glad that you have chosen to be online with us today as we worship the living God. I thank God that you made this choice. A lot of people uh, do not attend church and they sit and they grumble and groan and complain and their lives are miserable. And the online church is reaching out for those who can't make it out to church. We're reaching out for those who have difficulty getting to church. It is so easy. Just dial a number and you're in church or click on a, a site on your computer and you are in church. Some people say, well, this is not a church because people are so hung up on having to be in a certain building, in a certain seat at the same time. Hey, praise God, where two or three are gathered, God said, there I am in the midst of them. Where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst. And so we gather. We gather in your house in, in Tennessee, Dustina, where it's 59 degrees there, and we gather in our house here in Lithonia, Georgia. We gather in Minnesota. We gather in Idaho with uh, Christy Carpenter and her family. We gather in California. We gather together. Where two or three are gathered in my name, Jesus said, there I am in the midst of them. Hey, praise God. We're building a brand new church for the people in western Kenya. They don't have a church. Right now, that property is jungle. It's jungle, ladies and gentlemen. But God said, help them to build a church. They don't have a real building to go to, to attend to, to attend. So they meet under the trees. They meet in the jungle. They meet, they sit on the dirt. They worship God. But I tell you what, the power of God is mighty there. I got the report. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's nighttime in Kenya now, but this morning they had 10 people were saved. 10 people were saved, and they worship under the canopy of heaven. They worship under the trees in the jungle. And ladies and gentlemen, we, have, we are blessed here in America. We're blessed. We've got these fine buildings, these empty buildings. People will not attend. They're, 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 they're built magnificently. And they're showpieces, but people, many people don't believe and don't even attend a church. And then we make this ministry available, the online church, so that you can come online. We reach out to the sick and the shut-ins. We reach out to those who have been wounded and bruised by the church. We reach out to those who cannot get out of bed. We reach out to those who are restricted in their travel. Some are restricted because of snow, ice, and rain, and the elements. But praise God for the online church where we can assemble together. And until God plants you in a, a brick-and-mortar church, stay with us here at the online church where the Word of God is being preached and God's Word will not return unto Him void. We are seeing great results in the lives of people through the online church. Uh, if, if, if you cannot attend this church, then an hour from now, attend Paul Bakley. Uh, uh, go to www.paulbakeleyprophecy.com and get on the online online church there where, where they fellowship in Knox, Indiana. God has made a, the way plain because he loves you. He doesn't want anyone to perish. And so he has made it a way, made a way so that all of us can receive Jesus Christ as Lord. God's heart's desire is that all be saved. He said in 1 Peter 3, 9, He is long-suffering, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So we want to encourage you to encourage others to stop running from God and to run to God. These are the last days. These are the last days. After these days, that's it. There will be no more opportunities. And so we want to encourage you to encourage your family to get saved and stay saved. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got a lot of people confessing Jesus as Lord, but don't know a thing about him. They don't want to study. Don't be like that. Please, I beg you, don't be like that. Find out through the Bible, through the Word of God. Study the Word of God. Get under some anointed teaching 
find a pastor who's anointed to teach you the word of God. Study with your family. Have family altars where you can study the word of God so that when the winds of adversity blow, they will not blow you away. So we praise God. We welcome you. We welcome you to the online church, and we give thanks to you. We're going to ask our friend Ryan Trogler up in Marysville, Pennsylvania, to come on and lead us in prayer at this time. Good morning, Ryan. Uh, good morning, Pastor Carter. Good morning, church. Uh, it's a great day to be alive, isn't it? Yes, it is. All right, here we go. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another wonderful day today and giving us the breath of life to enjoy it. Um, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And we want to give, uh, we want you to give Pastor or Pastor Carter the knowledge and wisdom to give, teach us your word again today. And Lord, we just want to say thank you for everything, providing you know, providing all of our needs and our provisions. And Lord, we want you to heal the sick. And cure the blind, cure the deaf. That way they can hear and see the see the words and the miracles that you've been performing. Lord, we just want to give you everything. Uh, we just want to say thank you, and we love you, and praise you, and honor you, and glorify you in Jesus' Christ, precious name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you, Ryan, for leading us in prayer, and um, we just thank you for you and for your precious wife Tara and your daughter Jenna. And we praise God for what he's doing in your household. And I want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out today to come to worship the Lord. Praise God. I mean, this is church, ladies and gentlemen. This is church. Wherever two or more are gathered in my name, Jesus said, I am in the midst of them. And we thank God for the reports. People are getting saved all over the world. Muslims coming to Christ Jesus. We're getting reports. The Word of God is sharp, quick, and powerful, more uh, powerful than any two-edged sword. It's the divider of, of, of the of bone and the marrow, the soul and the spirit, and even the thoughts and intents of the heart. And men and women, boys and girls, are being saved because they hear the Word of God, and they believe the Word of God, and they act upon it. And we thank God. We thank God for sending His Word. All this year, uh, starting back in January, I have been teaching and I will be teaching on the fundamental principles of the Christian faith, the fundamental Christ principles of being a Christian. We're going to lay the foundation, ladies and gentlemen, the fundamental principles of being saved, what it really means to be saved, what uh, the Christian life is all about, and how we can stand on those principles principles um, so that pe God's people can know what we believe and, 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 and stand on what we believe. Um, so many people, so many people claim to, to be Christians, but they don't know Jesus, and Jesus does not know them. But we want you to know that you know that you know that you know Jesus and he knows you, and we want you to know what you believe so that you can give others a good report, a testimony of what you believe and why you believe it, based on the Word of God. And so throughout this year, we're going to focus this entire year on laying that foundation. God has given us his Word, and he, he talks about, Jesus talked about uh, uh, two men. One man was wise and one man was foolish. The, the, the foolish man built his house on, on, on sand. He built his house on sand, and the house was not on solid ground. And the winds came, and the rains came, and the storms came, and blew that house away because that house did not have a solid foundation. And then Jesus said there was a wise man. He built his house on solid rock. He was wise. He built his house on a solid rock. He had a solid foundation. And when the winds came and the waves came and the tornadoes and the cyclones and the tsunamis came and the adversities of life came, that house stood. And Jesus uh, compares uh, the body of Christ, you and me, with, uh, with the people, the man who built his house on a solid rock. 
Winds will blow against you. Adversity will come, ladies and gentlemen. But as you stand on the word of God, as you take your stand and 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 and, and make your stand and, and realize that on oh, Christ the solid rock, I'll stand, all other ground is sinking sand. God wants you and me to be like the wise man. Build your life on a firm foundation. Build your life on Jesus Christ. Know who he is. Know what he did for you. Know what the Bible says about you. Know how to worship him. Know how to give him praise. Know that the Bible says that you were made fearfully and wonderfully so that you can worship him. Learn how to worship God. This is what a Christian ought to do. I beg you, my friends, do not become a lazy, laid-back Christian. There are many lazy, laid-back Christians. They do not open their Bibles. They have five or six Bibles in their house, one in their car, one on their dashboard, one on the back seat, and they do not take time to read the Bible. They're, they, they're nominal Christians. They they're, are going through the showmanship thing. Ladies and gentlemen, when the adversities come, when the storms of life are raging, that showmanship cannot save anybody. God is looking for people who will believe him. He said, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not to be ashamed. And that parable about the foolish man and the wise man who built their houses different ways, that ought to be enough to convince us that we need our lives built on Jesus Christ. No, no, no. It's not attending church that will save you. You cannot get saved by attending the online church or the brick or mortar church. No, you cannot get saved by being baptized. No, contrary to what many of you have been taught, baptism does not save anyone. The Bible says you must be born again. You must be born again. And, and uh, Nicodemus asked Jesus, well, how can I, an old man, be born again uh, how do I have to go back into my mother's womb? How would that happen? And Jesus said to Nicodemus, No, this comes by the Holy Spirit. He says, The wind blows whichever way it what it will blow. Uh, uh, he says, Verily, 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 truly, truly, I say unto you, Nicodemus, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And so Jesus went on to teach Nicodemus that. You must be born again by the Holy Spirit. So that means we must believe in the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of churches, they don't believe in the Holy Spirit. They don't want you teaching about the Holy Spirit. How can you be born again without the Holy Spirit? It is the Holy Spirit who uh, brings the new birth. It is the Holy Spirit that baptizes us into the church. I thank God for God the Father, God the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, we call him, according to the Bible, Elohim. We serve a triune God. God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, God in three persons, yet one God. They operate together, one God. They are in agreement. They do not argue with one another. They agree with one another. Jesus said, I cannot do anything unless I see my Father do it. And Jesus could not do anything in ministry, ladies and gentlemen, until he was 30 years old and he was baptized in the River Jordan. The baptism did not give him power. He was baptized so that he could identify with sinful man. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. Jesus was born without sin, ladies and gentlemen. He had no sin in his nature. He did not sin. He was tempted, just like you and I are tempted, yet without sin. Jesus did not yield to the temptations of the devil. He was without sin, and therefore he qualifies to be our Savior, our Lord, our God, and our King. And so it wasn't the baptism that uh, 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 set Jesus apart for this great work. 
The baptism enabled him to identify with you and me. Now, if Jesus was baptized, yes, we have to be baptized. But Jesus, he specified, he said, believe and be baptized. Jesus said, believe and be baptized. Some people uh, think that being baptized is going to save them. No, you must believe first. The scripture teaches us. I'm laying a foundation, ladies and gentlemen. This may be uh, repetitive to some of you. I uh, 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 hope it's not boring, but we're laying a foundation so you can stand. And having done all to stand, because many people in these last and evil days cannot stand. The winds of adversity are blowing them away. Jesus said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Nicodemus, unless a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Man is born once of natural birth or cesarean section, but the new birth comes from the Holy Spirit when you confess Jesus as your Lord. The moment you confess Jesus as your Lord and believe that he's the Son of God, that he died on the cross, he was buried in the grave, he rose again from the dead, you are saved. Then it's from that moment, from the moment you're saved, you have a responsibility, ladies and gentlemen. You have a responsibility to study, to study the Word of God, to draw nigh unto the Lord, to submit your life and your will to the Lord Jesus Christ. There are many who do not submit to Jesus. They claim they're saved, but they do not submit to Jesus. They still walk in their pride. They still walk in their stubbornness. They still walk in their rebellion. That's why you still have a lot of people who are caught up in alcoholism, caught up in drugs, caught up in sex. You have people who are walking around HIV positive. You have many people uh, who have all kinds of illnesses, maladies. You've got mental illnesses because people are rebellious. Rebellious. They do not want to obey God. Many people want this cheap grace. They want you to pray for them. Pray that I get saved. Well, you must seek the Lord with all your heart. The Bible says, seek and you shall find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock and the door shall be opened. There is no one that the Lord will deny salvation to if that person will repent and humble themselves and call upon the name of the Lord. Jesus said in his word in Romans chapter 10, verses 9 and 10, that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe with your whole heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Well, if you confess and believe according to the scriptures, then you ought to be on a solid foundation. You ought to deny yourself, put all those old things away. Do not turn back. So many so-called believers are turning back. The first winds that blow upon them, they turn back. That's an evidence that a lot of people are not building their houses on the solid rock. You need to uh, uh, do more than just make that confession. You need to make sure that you have a solid foundation in the Word of God. You can enter into study. You can study the Word of God. You can get a Bible. You can read a Bible. The Holy Spirit will help you to read the Bible. If you can't read, get someone to read by you. The Bible says faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible says in Romans, Thou art inexcusable, O man. Romans chapter 8. Thou art inexcusable, O man. Oh, man. In other words, there will be no excuse for anyone not to be saved. Ladies and gentlemen, there will be no excuse for anyone not to be saved. Stop making excuses. Stop making excuses and call upon the name of the Lord. Don't let people around you make excuses. Don't believe their excuses. Study the word of God for yourself and believe it. Study the word. Read that Bible. Believe it. The Word works, ladies and gentlemen. The Holy Spirit works with the Word of God. As you read it, the Holy Spirit will give you divine revelation. Hide the Word in your heart. In other words, memorize the Word. 
tuck it in your heart. Put it in your heart so that you'll have something solid to grab onto. The Bible says we have hope as an anchor for our soul. We have hope as an anchor for our soul. Hope in God. Hope in God. Put your hope in God. Not in the government. Not in food stamps. Not in Social Security. Not in the, uh, your political party. Put your hope in God through Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the only ones who will survive will be those who have put their hope and trust in Jesus Christ. So you may say, well, Pastor Carl, you preach the same thing week after week. Well, I just hope that somebody, will, somebody week after week will hear it and believe. If this is going to help you to believe week after week, I'm going to keep on preaching. I don't have anything else to preach but Jesus Christ crucified, buried, and resurrected and soon to come again, and God has called me to preach the gospel. Well, what is the gospel, Pastor Carter? The gospel is the good news. The gospel is not what you hear on CNN or Fox News or Channel 6 or Channel 10 or Channel 3 or whatever your news source is. Uh, a lot of that is fake news, but there is no fake news with the gospel. The gospel is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. The gospel is every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. The gospel is Jesus Christ, the living Savior, the risen God, the word of God made flesh. God has given us his word so that we can hear it, so that we can receive it, so we can believe it, and it will sustain us and keep us. And so we're going to continue throughout this year laying a groundwork, a foundation of the principles of Christianity. We're going to take, we're going to lay this foundation just like the wise man who built his house on rock. He had to, first of all, uh, 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 set up a plumb line. And then he had to uh, uh, build a foundation on solid rock. And then he built upon that foundation, brick after brick. He had to put mortar on it, brick and mortar, ladies and gentlemen. And that's the, what the church is. The church is built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ. Jesus said, on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Hell is opening up every door and pouring out all of its fury upon mankind. But those of you who are built on the solid rock of Jesus Christ, hell cannot destroy you. The gates of hell cannot destroy you. You say, well, Pastor Carter, this is a wicked flu going around. Yes, but the flu cannot destroy you. People are dying, but the flu will not destroy you. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're living in an age where you don't know what is going to come out of our political leaders' mouths next. You don't know what lies they're going to twist next. But ladies and gentlemen, we stand on the truth of God's word. We stand on the truth of God's word. And, and, and I, I pray that you'll wake up and hear the word of God and test the voice of your politicians with the word of God. Test the spirit by the spirit. That is your responsibility. That is not the commentator's responsibility. That is not the news anchor's responsibility because everybody has their twist on, on this and that. But look at what God says in his word. We're looking at foundational principles, ladies and gentlemen. We looked recently, a few weeks ago, in the, in the area of why the church needs a strong foundation. We looked at Christ the solid rock. We looked uh, last week on how to build on the foundation. Today I want to take a look at the authority of God's word. The authority of God's word. I pray that you will get this. I pray that it will be, it'll be a blessing to you, ladies and gentlemen. Once you learn how to use the authority of God's word, you'll see the demons flee. Yes, they will flee. Sickness will flee. Uh, uh, yes, we do get sick, but sickness cannot destroy us. Uh, you'll see uh, your, your family members there start 
turning this door, changing. Oh, you're going to see some opposition. You're going to meet some opposition. You're going to be in some battle. You'll be in warfare because the Bible says, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so we're laying a foundation. Uh, today we want to just take a look at the authority of God's word. Ladies and gentlemen, the devil has been chasing some of you. He may have been whooping up on some of you, but when you finish hearing this message today, you'll realize that you have the authority and where Satan has been beating you up, he cannot beat you up anymore because you have the authority. You're going to learn how to exercise that authority and walk in it, and your life is going to change. Oh, as, as, as uh, Ralph Cramden used to say on the Jackie Gleason show years ago, oh, how sweet it is. Oh, how sweet it is. God's word, when you stand on the word of God, and when the winds of adversity blow against you, and you stand on the word of God, and you command that storm to stop, when you command that sickness to leave your house, when you command that your, your husband stop cheating on you, when you command that your wife do right, when you command that your children obey the Lord and obey you, when you command that uh, 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 prostitution stops in your community, when you command that drug dealing stops in your community, when you command that lies cease from coming out of the White House and out of the Capitol, when you take your stand on the Word of God, and you command that the truth be revealed, you're going to see great things happening. You'll see demons flee. Demons flee in the name of Jesus. Demons flee at the word of God. And, and when you realize, ladies and gentlemen, that God has given you the keys to the kingdom, you meaning the church, he's given you and me the keys to the kingdom of God. In other words, he has given us the full authority, ladies and gentlemen, that Satan had stolen from Adam and Eve when we realize that Jesus Christ has given to us, the church, the full authority, your life is going to change. And we want you to share with others about this authority in the name of Jesus. Demons flee. Sickness leaves. Uh, 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 a mental illness disappears. Peace comes to our marriage. Peace comes to our household. When we stand on the word of God and proclaim the word of God and use the keys to the kingdom. Jesus said when he said, he said, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. He said, unto you, meaning the church, you and me, I give you the keys to the kingdom. He said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed on heaven, in heaven. So it's up to us to bind and to loose. And how do we do this? By speaking God's word. By speaking God's word. Some of you are thanking God's word. You've got God's word in your heart. You think about it. You meditate on it. Now open your mouth and speak that word when the devil comes. When your husband comes, his heart starts cussing and wanting to abuse you. You speak the word of God on him. When your child disrespects you and, 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 and says something a child uh, should not say. My mama used to say, if, if you do that, I'll smack the taste out of your mouth. Uh, 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 you open your mouth and put the word of God on that child and watch how that child is humble. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the keys to the kingdom. We don't have to be captives of Satan. Satan ought to be captive of us. The Bible says that we take captive every thought obedient to the name of Jesus Christ. And so we're laying a foundation. We're going to lay this foundation week after week. We're going to build this house. We're going to build this spiritual house in the name of Jesus. We're going to build this strong house, meaning strong lives in Jesus Christ. From Sunday after Sunday, we're going to build and build until we reach the fullness of the stature of Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, when the church realized that we ought to stop fighting one another and we ought to join together, when the church, the body of Christ, 
whether it's the law online church or whether it's the mainline church, if you've been born again, washed in the blood of Jesus, then you and I ought to get along. We ought to reason together. We ought to love one another. We ought to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with one another against the enemy. We ought to be able to stand like uh, uh, the people did during the time of Nehemiah. We ought to stand on this wall. Yes, Terry, we ought to be more than conquerors <clears throat> through Jesus Christ who loved us. When we decide to stop fighting one another, stop being jealous of one another, stop being envious of one another, stop hating on one another, stop buying into hatred and walk in love. When we walk in love as Jesus walks in love, we shall see power. We shall see the world flipped upside down. We shall see households change. We shall see communities change. Yes, we will even see changes in the government. Ladies and gentlemen, we can even change the government by walking in love, by walking in the word of God. And that's your responsibility and my responsibility. Ladies and gentlemen, if the church doesn't do it, it won't be done. You can pray and pray and pray and pray and pray and pray. But if you're not willing to do your part and obey, obey God, nothing's going to happen. And so we ask you to seek the Lord with all your heart. Call upon him. Talk to God. Quiet yourself down. Listen to what God has to say. And if you have to, journal it. Write it down so you won't forget. And then do what his word tells you to do. And when we all do this, what a wonderful world we'll be living in. These are the last days. And God wants multitudes to be saved. God has given us great authority. Number one, through his word. Number two, through the blood of Jesus. And number three, through the word of our testimony. First John tells us that we are more than conquerors. We have already overcome the devil. We have overcome him by the word of our testimony and by the blood of Jesus. In other words, Jesus, uh, when he looks at us, he looks at us as already being more than conquerors. We have already overcome the devil. And, and when you look at the book of Revelation, and the book of Revelation gives us a picture of the end times, the, the Bible declares we have overcome the devil by the word of God and by the blood of Jesus. And so walk in this, ladies and gentlemen. Walk in this. No matter what the devil does to you, no matter how he pops up his ugly head, no matter what kind of devastation he causes, he is a loser. He cannot win. All these trials we're going through are just trials. They are trials. They are temporal. They are temporary. In the end, we win. The book tells us that we win. We have overcome the devil by the word of God and by the blood of Jesus. And so it's important that you study his word and understand what authority you have. Jesus said, you can speak to that mountain and that mountain shall be removed. You can speak to that sickness, that flu, that arthritis. You can speak to that stomach ailment, that migraine, and command it to leave in the name of Jesus, and it will have to leave. Ladies and gentlemen, the authority is in the Word of God, and Jesus has given us the keys to the kingdom. There are still many Christians who are afraid to speak out and speak out against sickness, against sin. Open your mouth. Open that, you, that, you know, that hole in your face, down on the bottom of your face, that hole. Open that hole and, and, and blow out God's word and put God's word on that sickness. Put God's word on that devil. And you say, thus saith the Lord uh, with his stripes, I am healed. Thus saith the Lord, no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Thus saith the Lord, when the enemy comes upon me like a flood, the Spirit of God will raise up a standard against him. Ladies and gentlemen, you keep doing this, and the devil will flee. He will pack up his bags. He'll find some other household to mess with. He'll find some other family to pick on. 
he realized I can't mess with uh, 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 the Chiquito family. They are strong in the Lord. I can't mess with the Trogler family. They're standing on the word of God. I can't mess with the West Carter family in New Jersey. They're st standing on the word of God. I can't mess with the Brigant family in Texas because they're standing on the word of God. I cannot mess with the Branham family in Tennessee. They are powerful in the word of God. I can't mess with the Carpenter family up in Idaho. They're powerful in the word of God. I can't mess with Jackie and Russell Fisher and their family in Kentucky. They are powerful in the word of God. And if I haven't called your name, the devil will be afraid of you if you stand on the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just laying a foundation. We're just trusting the Holy Ghost. God said his word will not return unto him void. I believe with my whole heart, many of you are going to start practicing putting the word on, of God on a situation. No longer uh, are you going to lock and load your Glock or your Uzi or your shotgun or your rifle. Uh, the weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. God has given us the weapon of praise. God has given us the weapon of worship. God has given us has given us the weapon of prayer. God has given us the weapon of his word. He said when two of us come together in his name, there he is in the midst. Praise God. Praise God. You can get online with your prayer partner. Or get on the cell phone with your prayer partner. And you can agree, touch and agree, as touching upon anything you ask God to do in his name, believing, and he will do it. Ladies and gentlemen, God has given us authority through his word. He's given us uh, uh, physical and mental uh, uh, effects because of his word. He's given us physical and mental effects. Well, what do you mean by that, Pastor Carter, that there are physical and mental effects of his word? Well, you can get healed through his word. Your mind can uh, receive peace because of the word of God. Um, there's physical healing in the Word of God. There's mental healing in the Word of God. God's Word is so varied and wonderful in its working that it provides not only spiritual health and strength for the soul, but also physical health and strength for the body. So Psalms, Psalm says, Fools, because of their transgression and because of their iniquities, were afflicted. They, their soul abhorred all manner of food, and they drew near to the gates of death. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He sent his word. Listen to this, Psalm 107, 17 through 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Yes, there are physical and mental effects of God's word. The, psalm, the psalmist gives us a picture of men so desperately sick that they have lost all appetite for food and are lying right at death's door. In their extremity, they cried out to the Lord, and he sends them that which they cry for, healing and deliverance. Have you ever been there? Have you been uh, at a place where you couldn't take food? You were crying out for uh, healing. Uh, you were at death's door. Uh, Jesus sends, sends what we cry for, healing and deliverance. Psalm 107, verse 20 says, He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Many of us have been on the road to destruction, and God sent his word. Many of us have had winds, adverse winds blowing against our house, but because our house is built on the solid rock of God's word, he will preserve his people. Praise God. Isaiah 55, 11 says, So shall my word be that goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me void, but it shall accomplish what I please, and it shall prosper in the thing for which I sent it. Proverbs 4, 20, and 22, 20 to 22 says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the midst of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Yes, the word of God 
can bring face physical and mental effects. The Word of God can also bring us victory, victorious effects. There are victorious effects uh, in God's Word. Uh, we can have victory over sin, ladies and gentlemen. Your Word have I hid in my heart, David said, that I might not sin against you. Your Word gives us victory over sin. The psalmist, King David, said, Your Word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. In other words, David stored up the Word of God in his heart like a treasure. Ladies and gentlemen, stir, stir up the Word of God in your heart like a treasure. 1 Corinthians 10, 13 says, Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory and honor of God. Whatever you eat or drink or whatever you do, to, do all to the glory and honor of God. Colossians 3, 17 says, And whatever you do in word or deed, do all. In the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Anything that we can do to the glory of God and in the name of the Lord Jesus is good and acceptable. Anything that we cannot do to the glory of God in the name, and in the name of Jesus Christ is wrong and harmful. The scriptures teach very plainly that the body of the Christian, having been redeemed from the dominion of Satan, by the blood of Christ is a temple for the Holy Spirit to dwell in and is therefore to be kept clean and holy. Keep your body clean, ladies and gentlemen. Keep your body clean. Win the victory over alcohol. Win the victory over drugs. Win the victory over adultery. Win the victory over lying. Win the victory over stealing. <clears throat> Win the victory over robbery of your, of your, your, your life and your health. Win the victory through the word of God. 1 Corinthians 3, 16 and 17 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him. For the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Do not destroy your temple, ladies and gentlemen, by lust. Do not destroy your temple by laziness. Read the word of God. Apply the word of God to your life. 1 Corinthians 6, 19 and 20 says, Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God? And you are not your own, for you were bought at a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which is God's, which are God's. 1 Thessalonians 4, 3 and 4 says, For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that each of you should know how to possess his own vessel, that is, the earthen vessel of his physical body, in sanctification and honor. You learn how to do this through the word of God. Without a thorough knowledge of God's word and how to apply it, a Christian has no weapon of attack, no weapon for which he can assault Satan and the powers of darkness and put them to flay. Then there are purifying effects of God's word. Yes, there are purifying effects in God's word. You can be cleansed by the word of God. Ephesians 5, 25 to 27 says we can be purified and cleansed. Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. The purpose of Christ's atoning death for the church as a whole and for each individual Christian is particular, is not fulfilled until those who are, are redeemed by his death have gone through a subsequent process of cleansing and sanctifying. You have been redeemed, ladies and gentlemen. You must go through a process of cleansing and sanctifying. Ladies and gentlemen, most people come to Christ after many, many years, decades of sin. They have built up sin in their life. Their habits, their very language and conversation is sinful. But when you come to Christ, you are a new creation. Now it's time to get sanctified, to get cleansed. And how do you do this? By walking in the Word. 1 John 1, 7 says, walk in the light. But if we walk in the light, 
as he is in the light. We have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, the, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Praise God. God's provision for spiritual cleansing always includes these two divine agents. God's provision for spiritual cleansing always includes the blood of Christ shed upon the cross and the washing of water with the word. So we, there are purifying, sanctifying effects of God's word. And then we finally end up with, we conclude with, with there are revelatory effects of God's word. In other words, God's word is a revelation. Number one, the word of God is our mirror. Number two, the word of God is our judge. James 1, 23 to 25 tells us about the revelatory effects of God's word, a mirror. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forgets what kind of man he was. But he who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues in it and is not a forgetful hearer but a doer of the word, this one will be blessed in what he does. Praise God. To receive the benefits from the mirror of God's word, we must without delay seek the cleansing that comes to us through the blood of Christ. Praise God. Praise God. We thank God. We thank God for enabling us, Holy Spirit, to lay a foundation on the authority of God's word. We've looked at the authority of God's word today. We've looked at the initial effects of God's word. We've looked at the physical and mental effects of God's word. We've looked at the victorious effects of God's word. We've looked at the purifying effects of God's word. We've looked at the revelatory effects of God's word. And this is only available to the church, to those who will believe the Lord Jesus Christ Ladies and gentlemen, people have their cures for everything, and they have their excuses. They have their so-called solutions for the world's problems, for the issues of life. But ladies and gentlemen, only those who will stand on the Word of God, hear the Word of God, and be doers of the Word of God will prevail. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus said that if you will confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. And when you start believing in your heart, that means you make a difference. You study the word of God. You seek sanctification. You seek putting away those sins. You forget those things which are behind. You stretch for those things which are ahead. And you press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. I pray that this message has helped you and encouraged you and inspired you and your family today. I pray that you are not turned from Jesus. And if you have turned, if you have backslidden, you can repent today. You can repent today. If you've backslidden, you've turned your back against Jesus, and you let sin get a grip in your life, repent. Confess. Tell God you're sorry. Ask him to forgive you. And he will. And he will. But he will only do it if you repent, if you call upon him. He said, call upon me and I will answer you. I will show you great and mighty things which you know not. If you're listening today and you uh, uh, want to be saved, you're not saved. You can be saved. God wants you to be saved. His perfect will is that you be saved. He says in 1 John 3, 9, that he's, not, uh, he's long-suffering, not willing that any should uh, perish, but the, that they come unto uh, repentance. So ask the Lord today. Ask him, ask him. Father God, I pray for those who desire salvation. I pray that they will confess with their mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in their heart that you raised him from the dead. I ask that you will help them to invite Jesus to come into their lives to be their Savior, Lord, and King. Stretch forth your mighty hand today, Lord, to save, not only to save, but to deliver and to heal your people. Bless them, Lord God, we pray in Jesus' mighty name. And we thank you, Father. We praise you. We bless you. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. 
If you have given your heart to Jesus Christ and have received him today uh, as your Savior and Lord, we want you to just give us a call, send us an email, and, 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 and we'll pray for you and encourage you on your way. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're nearby, you if you're near a, a local church, then you go to that church. You go to that church and, and, and present yourself to the pastor and sit under the authority of that word. Those of you who uh, choose to worship God through the online church, let's pray that God will reach more people. And as people get saved, that they will go into the local churches and help be a blessing in the local churches. We praise God. We bless God. We thank God that the spirit of the living God is moving throughout the whole earth. Lord, have your own way. Praise God. We greet. Uh, we thank you, Father, for these blessings and blessing your people in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. I see you. Uh, David Carter has signed in. Hey, Brother David, uh, next week, come on one hour earlier. You're preaching next week. Come on one hour earlier. I see you just popped in. Um, um, you want to come out on at 11 o'clock a.m. Uh, Eastern time next week. Our people will be waiting to hear the word that you bring from Dubai. We're going to be blessed with the word yeah. from Dubai. Come on and speak to us, David. Amen. Um, well, actually, I have to say good morning, Pastor, but good actually morning. good evening good over morning. here. But <laughs> good night to you. God bless you. I, I would definitely be on at 11 a.m. What time is there? It's, it's right now, here it is 12.05. Okay, wow. I, I, right okay. at 12 I, noon. Okay. okay. What time is yeah, it there um, in Dubai? Uh, um, it's like uh, um, close to 10. Okay, okay. So you want to come on an hour earlier next week, okay? Yes. Okay, I'm definitely will. I would definitely come on an hour earlier, okay? Okay, I definitely will come on an hour early, sir. Yes, sir. Good, good, God, good. Let the Lord use you, man. Give our love to your precious wife and your family. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Hallelujah. Okay, I look forward to it, Pastor. Okay, we'll be praying for you. Okay, okay thank you so much, sir. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Praise God. Ladies and gentlemen, we laid, uh, we're continuing to lay the foundational principles of Christianity. Uh, we're building this house on the solid rock. We're not building on sand. We're building on the solid rock. Um, you can revisit any of these messages, um, even back to the beginning of the year. Oh, you can go back to last year. Visit my YouTube channel, YouTube, Leroy Carter. YouTube, Leroy Carter. And you can revisit these messages. Um, you can teach others, share. Be, uh, please share them with others so others can get these foundational principles. Praise God. Well, bless God. We want to ask you to unmute your phone and say hello to us. And anyone who cares to share, please do so. Praise God. 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 Praise